Hello again, wonderful viewers. Welcome back. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far. First thing I gotta do is something I almost forgot. It would have been extra bad for me to miss this thing here. Because we are going to start off an event chain which is going to benefit us a lot later on. Yeah, we didn't walk in here last time, did we? Your name is literally Dr. Croc. I'm not sure I should have high hopes for this. Yes, yes, those are smokestacks on its back. Or at least one, anyway. Yeah, they're, they're trying to invent steampunk power armor. In this setting. Well, why not? We've already had a robot reveal. We might as well try and take advantage of it, even though it's not looking great. <clears throat> but enough about that. We've got a basement to explore. Well, let's check the situation. We got a couple of zombies here. We've got plenty of treasure chests lying around. And this formation right here, which is terrifying. There is... I certainly hope that these mages here stand still because no one in my party can withstand three blaze two spells. Unlike before, we have a land effect now, which is good for not getting one-shot, but bad for killing the zombies quickly. And we also have a mage to level up. This is going to be easier if Tao moves first, but not completely undoable if she doesn't. And she does! Hooray! I think Blaze 1 will be fine here. Even if they did their normal damage, it would be plenty, but... It deals more than that. This is a little time-consuming, but... That's one of the things you have to accept when you're leveling up weak characters. That's one of the things I liked about the original Valkyria Chronicles is that it allowed you to just use whatever is most effective on the map and not have to worry about uh, giving a certain person enough kills. Of course, conversely, the game design was such was that most of the time there was only ever one 
good strategy. You take the good with the bad, I guess. Oh good, no poison. Given her low starting level, I'll need to do this a few times. But we'll deal with it. I'd also like to get Chris another couple of kills, but I think, given what I'm dealing with here, it's better to wait for the bats. seems a little risky. I bet Gort would be okay, though. This is fine, I just want enough for at least one Blaze 2 at the end, and given my MP reserve, I don't think that's going to be a problem. And I think it's a good idea to start collecting those treasure chests. We've got another choke point, but this is not as bad as the last one. For one thing, some of the enemies are fairly exposed to ranged attack. And also, although there is a bend here, there isn't one along here. So it's reasonably accessible. Looks like that one is not moving. Now, I'm taking a pretty big risk there, because that Dark Mage could move forward and cast Blaze 2 on five people. Perhaps that's not optimal for me. Hmm, do you have an item? Well, more importantly, do you have a free item space? Turns out she does. Oh good, it doesn't move. Well, that was... that was a little bit of a risk. I don't think I've played a whole lot of tactics games where so much depends on knowing how particular enemies are scripted. Hmm. Nope. Nope. I'm gonna... Have him join in the fight when it's a lot safer. Hmm, maybe this is a decent idea. Yeah, snipers are just standing there. <laughs> yeah, Gord is one of my hardest hitters, and you saw what happened there. 
<coughs> this is actually a little bit risky for Luke since his defense is not amazing. And they're still not moving. Okay. Well, since I have so many healing MP right now, I think I can afford to just be a little bit wasteful. Although this is a bad place for her, so maybe not just yet. Let's see if these mages have any magic resist. Doesn't look like it. Of course, that was a huge gamble because... Well, actually, yeah. Um, a Blaze 2 can deal 9 damage and that would be a one-hit KO. Not, not really optimal for what I'm doing. Now we can have him deal some damage. Let's see... Oh yeah, I kinda lost track of what I was opening here. Never mind. That was not a big deal. A Blaze 2 here is tempting, but um, I don't think it's necessary. Actually, I should have moved Gord out of the way so someone else could attack that sniper. Oops. Well, I guess Chris will... No, actually I need her further up so that she's ready when we fight the bats. So what I'll do is... Just hand something over. You can use this, right? Even though you already have one and it's not very good at all. And choke points always be like that. Don't worry, as you can see from her MP, Anri will not be stealing kills for too much longer. Freeze one! Um, the obvious difference from Blaze one is that different enemies are, are strong or weak to it. Actually, I don't think anyone is really weak to freeze. But it doesn't matter that much, and the reason it doesn't matter is because freeze's base power is a fair bit better than Blaze. Unfortunately, Henry doesn't have the MP to use a freeze spell this battle, but we'll, we'll see some, don't worry. Right. Man, he's gaining attack power so fast. And I'd better better get in the way of the bats. 
We don't want any unfortunate accidents here. I'd like to get this kill for Chris. So what's her experience looking like right now? Oh, okay, that's pretty good progress. Ah, uh, one more turn. Yes, I know I'm sending my beg best and biggest tank out there to do item fetching. But it's okay. We, we've all witnessed how not impressive these bats are. I can't even bring myself to be upset anymore. Pretty hard, I see. Well, yes, I am exposing my uh, least durable characters in a rather foolish fashion. Why'd you ask? Heal level 2. It doesn't recover any more health than heal level 1, but it costs almost twice as much... Oh, okay, well that's good. Maybe I can give that to Lo later. And you're done, so yeah, you're gonna fetch some items. The benefit about heal 2 is that it has a range of 2 squares, which is... Very helpful when you're trying to keep an anti-spell formation. And I will have to do that as soon as we reach the final confrontation of this map. Huh. Fortunately, double casting is not a thing.
that's not a terribly good punching animation. The, they improved that a fair bit in the Game Boy Advance version. Though, stat-wise, he's not that much improved. And since he's leveled up as much as I need him to be, I don't even care if Max gets put to sleep. Hmm. Okay, sure, I'll do it this way. Maybe set that up for Gung, since he's a little behind. <coughs> Yeah, everyone's pretty much evened out now. That's pretty good. Yeah, I don't plan to purposefully leave characters completely underleveled in this playthrough. Even though, for example, I don't expect to use low past the point where I can possibly replace him, and could justify leaving him at level 1 for the right from the start. Not really how I do things. I'm, I'm more of the inclination to keep them leveled up to the point where I'm ready to put them on the bench and never put them in the party again. Uh, I'll leave it to you to decide whether that's more or less ethical than alternatives. A medical herb. A ten gold item in there. Okay. It's gonna be tougher and tougher to give kills to Hans as he goes on, so I might as well do this. Well, it's fairly easy to tell that this map is not nearly as much of a problem as the last one due to the uh, terrain and the, the placement of enemies. Like, having all those zombies with two mages behind them was a... Uh, ooh, that was scary. Well, I know why the game does this to me, but I, I still don't like it. Oh, they're, they they aren't stationary. They're moving. <sighs> well, what can you do? Alright, um... So, you have an, a free item space, so you're gonna get that last thing. And it's... I'd say it's fairly important to not neglect it, because, well, you'll see. Yeah, Gong had his chance. Who knows, maybe this will miss too. Nope. Yeah, I think I'm going to replace Gong before I replace Lo, because Lo at least has some MP. Power Ring. Uh, it increases your attack power. What's less intuitive is that it can also be used as an item to cast an attack up spell. 
which is very powerful in the early game. It gives a set amount, so it's not so useful late game. But as we're going to discover, we have fewer problems with attack power in the late game, and there's one encounter in particular where we are really going to need it. Of course, the power ring is also the speedrunner's friend. Oh, careful there. Right. So casting a Blaze 2 here will be pretty good. But I do have to be able to follow up on it well enough to make it worth that risk. For that to work, I need to bring Ken up and also, well, just pretty much everyone. The goal is to weaken them out all and then hopefully uh, defeat at least two of them before they get to move. And since turn order is random, it is a fairly big roll of the dice. I can't immediately think of a better plan. This is... This does mean some waiting since Ken... Oh, okay. Now he's in a pretty decent spot. Yeah, he can reach from here. Ah, I don't like it, but uh, what else am I gonna do? If those don't move, then Tao will only get hit by one Blaze 2, which he can survive. Otherwise, we're, we're going to be in for an oopsie-doodle of a tactical situation. That first one must have been a crit. And that probably gave her a lot of experience. Yeah. Uh... One of the nice things about area effect spells like this is that you can use them to level up your spellcasters pretty hard while still giving the kills to whoever needs them. Ah, oh, they don't move. Okay, fine. That would have been another Tao KO right there, if they did move, but it's okay. Turns out there is no problem. Heck, Tao could throw out another Blaze 2 and kill all of them, but that would be kind of wasteful, experience-wise, since you can't go above 50... yeah, you can't go above 50 experience per action. Oh yeah, might as well do that. The power ring is useful for a lot of things. For example, if you have a healer that you want to level up, give them the power ring and they'll be able to secure those kills a lot easier.
a lot easier. Hmm. Do I even have anyone in that level 5 here? Yeah, I do. Okay, sure. Ideally, he would get the kill, but I'm willing to let it go. And it's good to have at least another Blaze 2 ready because the skeleton, well... I believe it's an upgrade from zombies. Yeah, an attack of 21 is no joke. That'll hit almost anyone really hard. And you can bet we're gonna see more of those guys later. Not just one of them uh, staying in one place. That's actually not a bad way to introduce newer, tougher guys. Where at first you have them not doing anything tactically uh, difficult, just kind of letting their stats speak for themselves, and then later on there are more of them and they move around in a more intelligent way. You know what, I think now's a good time to start empty healing. I, I'd be surprised if the skeleton moved, but hey, maybe he will... Way to go, Hans. Yeah, and that, that was a somewhat beefier attack, and it still didn't do anything. Ken might be able to do something. Let's find out. Nope. Uh, he'd, he'd have to use the Bronze Lance to do more than one point of damage. And it's not even weak against Blaze, but it's probably strong against Freeze. Still, 10 damage is so much better than what everyone else is doing. Casting higher levels of heal doesn't really do much to get more experience. To get better healing experience, you need to either heal a lot of health or use aura to affect more than one guy. We got our best tank here, so... Yeah. As I said, no joke. Uh, not quite. Right now, anyone could defeat the skeleton, so... Yeah, I might as well. He's not gonna defeat a skeleton any other way. What? What? He got a point of attack? That's a... that is a power level for him. One total stat point and it's still better than what usually happens. Oh, oh, right. This is still using the...
Yeah, don't lose that. It probably doesn't work because this still counts as being on a battlefield. The patch most likely only works in non-combat places. Yeah. So, uh, if you thought the zombies were scary, well, skeletons are even spookier. And that is just about it. Well, not quite. I mean, this orb of light was used for something, and that's something. Is this. Uh, considering how we barely scratched that last enemy, that doesn't fill me a lot with a whole lot of confidence. Well, I guess that concludes that. Alright, so we advanced the story and no one had to die this time. I think the pacing would be better if no one called us the Shining Force until after this conversation, but you know what? I guess we had to have that title drop a little bit earlier. Okay, fine. Yeah, this is perfectly okay. And most of the other conversations don't change so much. Well, let's... Let's save, because who knows what's going to happen when we go outside again. Now we're good. Well, uh, I guess we'll either get more town or a battle next. Either way, I'll see you then.